And all God's people say, yeah. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. I'm really blessed by the songs, the part that the song have, the, the song that the choir have sung. It really touched our hearts. It's a doctrinal song. Nagpapatotoo yeah. yan na uh, yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa kanyang pag-ibig at sa kanyang abad sa atin. And we ought to thank the Lord because we are the recipient of His grace and of His great mercies. Because kung tatanungin mo ang Panginoon, we deserve to go to Him. But praise the Lord, because of His great mercies, we are saved. And we praise the Lord for that. And that this morning, we have 58 professions of faith. And all that people say, Amen! Yeah. Parang hindi kayo excited. We have 58 professions of faith. Doors na to added Bible study and four conducted good news. And that's the job of the church. Amen. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Kaya napakahalaga po yung ating ginagawa ay nasa tamang pundasyon. Sa pagkat sa 1 Corinthians 3, binanggit ni Apostol Pablo doon na hindi lahat ng pundasyon ay tama. Kaya masabi ng Bible, as a wise master builder, Mag-ingat tayo kung papaano tayo nagtatayo. Because we believe that the church is the pillar and the ground of truth. Salamat na lang, hindi tayo lang iniligtas. Kundi inilagay tayo ng Panginoon sa tamang iglesia. At alam natin ang ating ginagawa, hindi lang panlupa. Someday in eternity, we will do what we are doing right now. We will worship the Lord for the rest of our life. Because that is the purpose of our existence. And uh, we praise that for members who missed last week and we're so happy to see them today. Uh, Philip, umabanti ka ba? At saka ka na na sa likod pag may asawa ka na, saka pag matanda ka na. Yan, bumabig ka dito sa gitna. Yan. Uh, be reminded that you're in a worship service with moving, with roaming around so the hours won't be disturbed. Para uh, lahat ay mayroon tayong focus. Okay? And thank you, choir. Thank you, special number. Blessings. Alam niyo, mga awit na yan. Pag discourage ka, maawit ka. Yeah. What, you will, what you will read before Christ was arrested, alam niyo, ginagawa ng Panginoon, aside from praying, He was singing. Alam niyo, yung kanyang maharapin, and yet He sing. Kaya napakalaga sa mga ng palataya ang awitin. Yung melody sa ating puso. Unless I forget, we have visitor, visita ni Ante Imelda. Ah, kapatid. Na nakakatanda. Hindi ko halata, ah. Para lang kayong magkasigitan. Oh, 75! Praise the Lord. Alam niyo sa akin ng Bible, by reason of health, ang edad ng tao, 70 lang. O kaya may bonus na si ma'am ng 5 years. Mabuti, kung umabot ka ng 16, ba? Yung iba na mamatay at yung very young age. Kaya salamat na lang, may layunin pa ang Diyos sa buhay natin. Welcome po sa Scripture Baptist Church and also mayroon mo tayong bisita. Bisita ni Erika, mga tagamaktan. At mamaya mayroon tayong babautismuhan na dalawa. Amen? Walang, walang mag-claim sa inyo kung kanilang bunga. Basta ang verse natin dyan, Apollos planted, Paul planted, Apollos water, but God even the increase. Are we ready to receive God's Word this morning? Yeah. Tayo po kumay ang lahat. Pagpusan natin ang ating mga Biblia. At sa ating pagbubukas ng salita ng Panginoon, nayaan natin na buksan din ang ating mga puso sa pakitinig ng Kanyang salita. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, basahin natin yung verses 1 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 6. We've entitled this message, Jesus Can Provide. Jesus can provide. Let me start reading from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to will of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power by their record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty, that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. And this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God, 
inasmuch that we beside Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. May God have your blessing upon the reading of his word. Let's pour us for a while and let's ask the Lord to bless the message. Thank you so much, Father, for the liberty we have in this county to study thy precious word na walang nagpe-persecute sa amin, Panginoon. Help us, Lord, not to take this privilege for granted, but to to assist the moment na lahat ng aming gagawin, Panginoon, ay para po sa itong kaluguran. We help us to be reminded that we exist and we move in our being because of your glory. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, ang inyong mga anak especially, na huwag namin mawala sa isipan na ang dahilan ng aming kinabubuhay ay para sa inyong kaluwalatian. Tulungan mo ang bawat mana ng palataya na mabuhay para sa iyo at wala akong ibang buhay kundi kayo. Sa mga kapapila namin, Panginoon, na may karamdaman, di namin alam kung anong kanilang sakit. Dalangin namin na patuloy kayo ipuhin ang kanilang mga karamdaman kung sila may sakit physical. At sa mga ibang mana ng palataya na maraming nalalamig, spiritual. Dalangin ko po na patuloy kayo magpaalala sa kanila na bilang sang mana ng palataya, ang pagpapainip at pagpapalumbalik ng aming puginip ay pagkakaroon ng pakikiisa sa inyong gawain. Dalangin namin sa pangaral ng salita, give us the eagerness, prepare our hearts, give us an ear that is ready to listen to thy word, bless every part of our service, thank you for the songs that we have heard. It truly ministered to our hearts and I pray that you would continue to bless until, the, uh, until this day ay matapos po. Muli, purihin ang iyong pangalan, ikaw ang patuloy na mga itaas at malibot sa aming kalabitahan. Ikaw lang po ang aming makita, we ask for the Spirit to move in our midst, and we ask for the Spirit to be our guide, to be our teacher, and to be us enlightenment. Bless everyone, this we ask in Jesus' mighty name. And all this we will say, Amen. Amen. Be seated. We have studied last week that it is God who provides provision for His church. Now remember the message I preached, that Jesus can build. Have you remember that? How many of you remember the message I preached? Entitled, Jesus can build. Or, Jesus can... Yeah, Jesus can build. And it talks about the church. Alam niyo po, napakahalaga, palatas-tas na, na napakahalaga bilang isang mananampalataya. Kung tunay kang mananampalataya, dapat ikaw ay nasa tamang simbahan. Sapagkat ang Panginoon mismo ang nagsabi at nagtatahal na sa ibabaw na batong ito, itatayo ko ang aking simbahan. And it's not a Mormon church, I believe. It is not a Catholic church, I believe. It is not a more a, an iglesia ni Cristo, but I believe it is a Bible Baptist church. And you ought to praise the Lord that you are added to this church. Sa pagkatalan niyo, pag hindi mo sa tamang puntasyon itinatag at itinalaga ang iyong ginagawa, you shall suffer loss, the Bible says. Kaya kung hindi lang ang Panginoon can build, also He is the God who can provide. And we have studied last week that our mission was His last commission. And the source of the mission is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Sa, sa simbahan ko, hindi pa pwedeng mawala tayo dun sa mission. At dalawa yan, there is a vision and there is wrong vision. Now go back to Philippians chapter 2. Go back to Philippians chapter 2 to begin. Sa mga wala, for the sake of others who were not here yet last week, go to Philippians chapter 2, in verse 13. I would like you to open your Bible and look at your Bible very carefully, and let's read that verse all together. Are you there? If you're there, say Amen. Amen. Let's read that all together when we begin. For it is God which worketh... Let's read it, read it one more time. All. Ready? Begin. Okay, God provides the vision and that's the will. To will is the vision. What is provision? To do. How God will do His vision? He will do it through you. Kaya napakahalaga po mga kapatid, na bilang isang mana ng palataya, parapin natin ipaalala sa ating mga sarili na ang dahilan kung bakit ang iglesia ay nananatili sapagkat doon sa vision. And I mentioned last week that God's vision is a heavenly vision. God's vision is not a man-made or self-centered vision, I believe. It is the vision of grace. 
And we have, I've said last week that grace is the inner working of the Spirit. That's my first point last week. Na yung inatanggap mo bilang isang mana ng palataya, ito yung vision na nanggaling sa Panginoon. At pag ikaw ay ligtas, I believe, iba, iba, iba ang pananaw mo at iba kung paano mo tignan ang mundo. Hindi ka lang nabubuhay katulad ng Epicurean philosophy that eat, drink, and be merry, and tomorrow you will die. No, you don't have that kind of mindset. Instead, you look for the things which are above. Then you set your affection on things above. Hindi lang makalupa, hindi lang bagay na temporal sapagkat lahat ng bagay na ating nakikita ayon sa ikalawang purinto ay pansamantala. Pero mga bagay na hindi natin nakikita ay internal. And that's what we have learned last week. So the source of the vision is no other than the grace of God. Now look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 please. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Tinan niyo kung may hindi mga kapatid. In verse 8, the Bible says, For by grace, look at your Bible, For by grace, are you there? At tayo, Baptist, dapat sanay tayo magbuklat ng Biblia. Are you there? This is what the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. By the way, grace is a gift. When you receive grace, you receive a wonderful and marvelous gift. And the Bible says, ye are saved by grace, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In verse 10, now, nakatanggap ka ng biyaya, ano kayo sa akin ito? In verse 10, for we are His workmanship. Tayo po ay ginagawa at patuloy na ginagawa ng Diyos. Saan tayo umilika? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Kaya ako naniniwala pag ikaw ay totoong ligtas. At ang biyaya ng Diyos is at work in your life. Yan ay ang bubunga ng mabuting gawa. Hindi ka gumagawa ng mabuti para maligtas. Gumagawa ka ng mabuti sapagkat yan ay bunga ng biyaya. Kaya walang pagsasabi na isang mana ng palataya, totoong mana ng palataya, na sinasabi mo, ikaw ay nakatanggap ng biyaya ng Panginoon, and yet walang makita ang bunga sa iyo ng mabuting gawa. Huwag niyo pong balik na rin. Ang source is the grace. The fruit is good works. Ang marami binabaliktar. Ginagawa ang good works ang dahilan at ang bunga kaligtasan. Mali po. Ang biyaya, ang ugat, ang bunga ay mabuting gawa. Kaya po dyan tayo niligtas ng Panginoon. And it is, you know, when grace works in the heart of a person, I believe he will, the person will never be the same again. Sapagkat the Bible says, go back, going back to our text, in verse 1, sabi niya po, so napapos ang mga tagapunin, tomorrow, brethren, we do you to wait, the word wait that means to declare, to make know, to know. The grace of God. Number one, what you, have, what you will learn in our first point is the grace of God. Na itong biyayan na ito ay hindi lang basta ating natanggap. Yan ang nagsimula sa atin according to the book of Ephesians 2.8 and in verse 10 at yan ang patuloy na gagawa sa atin. And also, God wants us to grow in that same grace. In 2 Peter 3.18, the Bible says, For by, but grow in grace. So, ito pong ating natanggap, ako it is the person of Christ. Kaya sa atin ni Apostol na Pablo, gusto kong malaman ninyo, ang biyaya ng Diyos, at ang biyaya ng Diyos, ay yan po ang kikinus sa atin. Now, in 2 Peter 3.18, meron ulit tinatawag dyan na way, at meron ulit provision. Now, sa atin na 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are two things there. Number one, the grace. Now, kanino gawa ang grace? Kanino po? Gawa mo? No, ang gawa ko, sabi ng Romans, hindi na yung biyaya. Yun na ay gawa. So kung yan ay biyaya, yan ay totally sa biyaya. So ito si biyaya, you have grace. Who is grace? Actually, grace is the person of Christ. Remember in John chapter 1, last week I mentioned that, that we receive the fullness of God 
Grace for grace. The fullness of God. So, ito si Biyaya. Sino ito? Biyaya. Kapag ikaw ay ligtas, sabi ka rito, knowledge. Ang Christian life mo, ikaw si Jericho. Ito si Grace, kasi dalawa yung binanggit dyan eh. But grow in grace and in the knowledge na ang Diyos na ito nag-provide ng lahat. In fact, the Bible says, God is the God of all grace. So lahat ng kailangan mo, ako si Manan ng Palataya, lahat na ibinigay sa akin. But, the point is, kailangan kong lumago. You understand me? Now, how would I grow in grace? Kailangan kong sinalage. This is my part. You understand me? Now, this is God's part. Okay? To provide grace. This is Grace is God's enabling. Pag ikaw wala kang biyaya, kahit may knowledge ka, walang kwenta yan. Sapagat ang biyaya will make you abound. But to balance everything, there is God's part and there is your part. Who is this? Knowledge. Who is this? So ang biyaya po dapat yan balance. Pag ikaw lumalago ka lang sa kaalaman at hindi ka lumalago sa biyaya, Dumadami, dumalaki ang puno mo sa dami ng laman, pero wala kang nagagawa. At puro ka lang mawa. Maraming kristyano ganyan. Magaling mo mawa, pero walang gawa. Ay mo, hindi tayo dun sa isa dun. Kasi pag may biyaya ka, gumagawa ka, at ikaw ay lumalago din sa kaalaman. Do you understand the balance there? So we should grow in knowledge, And even the Bible challenges us to grow in grace. To grow in Christ-likeness. Because the character of grace is the person of Christ. Walang silbi ang kaalaman kung walang biyaya. Wala namang silbi ang biyaya kung wala namang kaalaman. Naiintindihan niyo po. Now, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na ikaw ay lumalabo sa biyaya kung hindi ka lumalabo sa kaalaman. Kaya po, balance si dapat ng dalawa na yan. There is God's part, this is the vision, and here is the provision. Grow in knowledge. Kaya pag ikaw hindi ka lumalago sa kaalaman, hindi ka lumalago sa biyaya. At pag ikaw ay puro ka ng kaalaman, and yet, hindi mo naman ginagawa, hindi ka lumalago sa biyaya. Naintindihan niyo ba? Maniwala ka maraming kristyano, maraming alam. Pero dahil walang biyaya, walang ginagawa. I, I, I expound that verse just to begin. We receive the grace of God. Ano pong ating natanggap? Ano po yung klaseng biyay na? It's grace for grace. It's the fullness of the God and body. Yan yung natanggap mo. Kaya kung iisipin mo mabuti mga kapatid, itong biyay, hindi ito basta-basta. Ito yung patuloy na gumagawa para magbunga ng mabuting gawa. Ephesians 2, then, remember? For he, we are his workmanship created unto good works. Do you understand? Okay, balik kayo. So that is the grace of God. Itong biyaya na to will make us abound in God's work and in good works. You know, salamat na lang, kahit gano'ng hindi ang kasalanan natin, grace abound more than our sin. That's why I believe if you're a true believer, walang kristyano na mamumuhay sa kasalanan. Look at Romans chapter 5. Sapagat ang biyaya ay tuturuan ka na mamuhay sa biyaya. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 20. I like this verse. The Bible says, For over the law entered that the offense might abound, but for sin abounded, grace did much more abound that a sin hath reigned unto death. Even so, my grace went through righteousness and to eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid! How shall we, we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Bakit po? Sapagkat pag meron kang biyayan ng Diyos, hindi ka mag-aabound sa sin. When you are abounding in grace, you will not abound in sin. Hindi pa pwedeng nag-aabaw ng grace tapos yung kasalanan nag-aabaw din. No? Kasi kung ang biyaya ay tuturuan ka na i-deny ang kasalanan. At ikaw ay tuturuan niya na mag-abaw sa biyaya. 
So grace abound more than our sin. Also grace abound in good works and godliness. Balik po tayo sa 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. Ito po ang sabi naman na lang sulat natin verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good. What? Kita niyo po parate, ang parating gawa ng biyaya hindi lang sa kasalanan dati nag-aabaw sa sin. When you receive grace, you stop sinning and you start to abound in grace. And other than that, tuturuan ka niya to abound in good works. Kaya kung batayan ko, gawa ang batayan, mga kapatid, marami talaga hindi ligtas. Sapagkat pag gumawa sa iyo ang biyaya, ay eh mag-aabound ka ng ano? Come on, say it. Sa ka mag-aabound? Good works. O isa pa, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 21. Look at this. Make you perfect in every good work. O again, work na naman. To do His will. Here's the vision. What's the provision there? Working in you that which is well pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ who will be glory forever and ever. Amen. Have you seen the vision and the provision? Yep. God will provide the vision, His will. What is the provision? Working in you. In verse 25, grace be with you all. Amen. Ang biyada po ng Panginoon ay magputuro sa atin na mag-abang sa mabuting gawa at sa godliness. Kaya ang buhay ng mananampalataya, kabutihan at kabanalan at katinuan. Pag wala ka niyang tatlong K na yan, eh wala kang K. Dapat nag-aabaw ang mananampalataya dyan. And of course, who is the who is example or who is the ultimate example of grace? Of course, it's no other than Christ. Wala pong ibang persona ang biyaya, kundi ang Panginoong Yesus. Ito yung sa Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 7. The Bible says, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is the grace given that I should preach the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. What is the grace of God? It is unsearchable riches of Christ. Na sino ba ako para mahalit ang Diyos? Di ba biyaya yan? Sino ba ako para kanyang mahalin, ibigin, iset ng kanyang puso sa akin? Sino ka ba? Have you ever asked the Lord, why did the Lord love you? Are you deserving? Are we deserving? No, sir. None of us deserves, deserves His grace. Yep. None of us deserves His mercies. So pagkat kung tatanungin mo, anong deserve natin, it's not the grace of God, it's hell. Yeah. Kaya masalamat po when we talk about the grace of God, hindi lang po ito patungkol sa kaligtasan, ito rin ay patungkol sa pagkilos ng Diyos sa buhay ng mananampalataya. Ito yung biya, ito yung salita na hindi mo ba pwedeng i-define or i-describe sa iisang salita. But it is best described or named as Jesus Christ. Kaya pa sinabi mo ang grace, one thing that will pop in your mind is Jesus Christ. At gusto ng Panginoon, malaman niyang biyaya na yan. Balik po tayo sa ating text. Tinan niyo sa chapter 8. Sa Ephesians chapter 8. In verse 1, tinan niyo sabi niya po sa na Pablo, he was reminding the Corinthian church na ang sabi niya, we do you to wit of the grace and the word wit there. It means to know, to declare. Gusto ko sabihin sa inyo mga taga-Urinto na ang biyaya ng Diyos ay ibinigay sa inyo. Sapagat yung biyaya na yan, yan po ang magtuturo sa atin na tayo po ay mag-abound. Second point, not only the grace of God, secondly, the grace of God restored. In verse 1, the Bible says, We do you to wit of the grace of God, best told. 
Don't miss the word bestowed. Someone said, It is one thing to know the grace of God in our head. It's another thing to let grace in our hearts. Let me repeat. It's one thing to know the grace of God in our head. It's another thing to let grace in our hearts. Amen, amen, amen. Alam niyo po, minsan alam lang natin yung biyaya. Pero ang tanong, napupunta ba sa ating isip, napunta sa ating puso, o sa isip lang? You know, you, you may know grace theologically. The Greek word of it, grace. The, how the Bible describes it. Malaman mo lahat yan, pero kung hindi sa isip lang yan, at hindi yan bababa dito, It's useless. Kaya masabi niya po sa lapag ng Robert Brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God best told. Yan po ay ibinigay, hindi lang para ating malaman, kung hindi para itouch ang ating mga puso. You know, grace best told can simply define us how. Look at verse 2. How. See that? If I'm going to ask you this morning, my friend, just fa follow, follow in your Bible. Ang sabi ng verse 1, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God, bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Now, question, paano ko malalaman kung ang biyaya ay hindi ko lang alam at muba sa aking puso? Paano ko malalaman? Simply by questioning yourself, asking your question, asking yourself a question, How? Kung tatanungin kita ngayong umaga, sinasabi mo ikaw ay resipyente ng biyaya, paano mo ay may pakita? Nakita niyo po, I, I, I believe the Bible was outlined. Kaya sabi niya po sa na Pablo, paano? Naiintindihan niyo ba mga kapatid? Ising pa ba kayo? Hey. Andiyan dyan pa ba kayo? Yeah. Itong biyaya na ibinigay sa atin will definitely change our heart. Ito hindi lang dito po yan, hindi lang sa kaalaman, kung hindi dapat bumaba sa ating puso. Ito yung sa Hebrews chapter 13. Saan ba dapat tayo ma-establish? I hope hindi lang tayo lumalago, alam natin yung definition, and yet, wala nangyayari sa buhay natin. Hebrews 13 verse 9, the Bible says, Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with See, ano pong sabi ng banal na kasulatan na ang ating puso pala ay dapat tumibay saan? Saan po? Saan dapat tumibay ang ating puso? And not with meats. Meaning, hindi sa external kung hindi from within. By the way, when God begins His construction, He does not start from outside. He start from within. Alam mo bakit marami walang, hindi na babago paglabas, walang nabago. Pag tuwing Sunday lang, iba ang suot, iba ang itsura. Pero during, during normal days, iba ang buhay. Walang biyaya na nagbago sa puso. Hindi lang the grace of God, but also the grace of God bestowed. Listen, the word bestowed, it means ibinigay. Pagligtas ka, meron ka yan. Yeah. You have grace, Ate Marianita. You have grace, Mamala. At ito na isang Panginoon na hindi lang sa ating isip, kundi ito ay maapektuhan ng ating puso. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, we do you to it of the grace of God. It was bestowed. Ito po ay ibinigay freely sa atin. Yeah. And this grace should affect our life. Ito yung si Apostol na Pablo. Bakit ba siya nabago? Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. Tignan niyo bakit siya nabago. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. First Timothy 13, verse, chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, Who was before a blasphemer? and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of the Lord was exceeding 
abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Ano siya dati? He was a persecutor, a blasphemer, and Julius. Pero sabi niya, ako'y nakatanggap ng awa. At ito ay dahilan, the following verse tells us, because of the exceeding grace of God. Sino tayo magbago ng mga matay tao? Grace. Sino ang tayo magbago ng tao persecutor? Kaya kung ikaw, kristyano ka, pinipersecute ka ng boss mo, workmate mo, kailangan niya para magbago grace. And all of us, we see the grace of God. Ano nagbago kay Apostol na Pablo? It is not, it is not him. It is the grace of God bestowed on him. Kaya pag may biyaya ka, papaano mo ipakita? The best, the simple question that you ask yourself, how? This is how the Lord changed him. Dating, I, I hope yung buhay natin may contrast sa ngayon. Sapatat ang grace po may contrast. Yung dating ikaw, sa ano ka na ngayon at present. Ah, sabi niya po sa na Pablo, dati ako injurious, I'm a persecutor. But now, now, I am made a minister of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Dahil po yan sa biyaya. At again, mga kapatid, kung walang biyayang ibinigay sa iyo, hindi ka magbabago. Now, going back to our text, the, the story here is, Paul was trying to remind the church at Corinth about the grace of giving. And he used the Macedonian churches as an example to challenge the Corinthian believers. Now, I believe it all my heart, ito pong biyayang ibinigay ng Panginoon sa Macedonian churches, ay biyaya ang gumagawa sa kanila. Because naturally speaking and humanly speaking, we are selfish. Bata pa lang, madamot na eh. Kaya mo, paglabas ng bata, ano ang kamay? Nakaganyan. Nung umiyak, nye, nye, nangihini agad. That's the nature. That is our nature. Pero bagaman, Ni, dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon, bagamat sa kanilang pinagdadaanan, bagamat sa kanilang problema, sabi ng Bible in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded. See that? Albert, Albert Barnes said, the favor which God had shown them in exciting a spirit of liberality and in enabling them to contribute. Ay sinabi natin biyaya, by the way, God's favor ito. Ito yung pabor na hindi po nanggagaling sa tao. You know, most of the time, ang tao gusto ng pabor, kaya sip-sip sa boss. Uh, crab mentality. But you know, when you have the grace of God, hindi mo kailangan yan. Because if you have favor from God, you will have favor of men. Itong dahilan kung bakit sila nag-abound. Why? Because of the grace of God that was bestowed on them. Yeah. Tinan yung ginamit na ng salita na ng Biblia in verse 2. In the exaggeration ito ha, look at the word great trial of affliction. Now, just try to imagine this. May pinagdadaanan, may mga pagsubo, pero yung kaligayahan umakaw. Alam mo, kahit gano'n ka at hindi ang trials and testings ng buhay mo, pag meron kang biyaya, ang kagalakan mo, umaapaw pa rin. Yeah. Hindi nang gagaling sa tao yan. Saan nang gagaling yan? Sa biyaya. So in great fire, what else? In deep poverty, meaning to say, they lack supply. Pero sabi ng Bible, they abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Bagamat walang silang kakayahan yet, sila ay nag-abound sa kanilang kayamanan, sa kanilang pagbibigay. And not only that, beyond their power, meaning to say, they have limited resources, they have limitation, but listen to this, they have willingness. Yeah. Eh, maraming tao, eh, boy, meron din willing eh. Kaya pag ang grace ng Lord nag-work sa puso ng tao, yung tao hindi willing, magiging willing. Yung tao walang kakayahan, 
magkaaroon ng kakayahan. Yung tao may pinagdadaanan, magpapatuloy at mayroong kagalahan. Look at the word that how the Bible, the word the Bible used the word abundance. The word the Bible used the word abounded, liberality. See, beyond their power. That's grace. Na ay gano kahirap itong mga simbahan na ito, bagamat sila po ay wala kakayahan, pinansyal. But they were willing of themselves because of the grace best put on them. Alam mo, hindi naman ito about sa pera eh. About ito sa usapan na biyaya ng Diyos sa puso ng tao. Kasi ito, sabihin natin na wala naman silang kakayahan eh. And even, even Apostle Paul did not expect that they will give. Kaya nga sabi niya, not that as we hope, hindi namin inaasahan, pero they gave. Kipa niyo po, yan ang resulta. In verse 2, that grace will what? About. Now look at verse 6. Tignan niyo kumabuti mga kapatid. Anong ginagamit niya po sa napablo ng motivation? Hindi po personality, it's the person of Christ. Now read verse 7. Ready? Read. Okay. Before I explain, expand verse 7. In verse 6, sabi ng Bible, Inasmuch that we desire by it was not as he had begun, look at the word begun, so he would also finish in you the same Grace. Binugay niya yung word na begun and finish. Meaning ko sa'yo mga kapatid, kung meron kang biyaya ng Panginoon, yan ang, magsimul yan ang nagsimula sa'yo at yan din naman ang magtatapos sa'yo. Have you noticed the word? The Bible used the word begun and also finish. Kaya po ang biyaya ng Panginoon, hindi nahihinto sa kalagitnaan. Yan po dapat ay may pagtatapos. Kung ikaw ay merong biyaya ng Panginoon, ay eh dapat meron din tinatawag na pagtatapos. Finish this grace also. Now, and then, ang sabi niya po sa na Pablo, kung ikaw ay nag-a-abound sa biyaya na, how would I know that a person is abounding in grace? In verse 7, as you have read, una, meron siyang Faith. Faith, right? Halika rito si Jay, bago ka makatulog. Halika rito, faith. Pag ikaw ay nag-aabound sa pananampalataya, you will have what? Faith. At pag sa'yo kung pananampalataya, this is attendance. Okay? Attendance. Ano lang? And then what's next? If you have faith, and secondly, ano sabi ng verse 7? Atherance. Ano yan? That is soul winning. Marito, marito soul winning. Wow. Ah, ako na pinakamarami na soul winningan. Si CJ, na soul winningan mo, 30? 33. Praise the Lord for that. So, meron pang faith. Sino si faith? Attendance. Sino si atherance? SW. Something wrong or soul winning. Yan. And then we have, what's the next character? Knowledge. Halika rito, people. You have also knowledge. Now, sino po si knowledge? This is Bible reading. Ayan. Okay? Ayan. Not only that. Kasi ang biyaya, i-aabound kanya sa bawat isa. Komplekoy mo natin yung karakter. So, sino po si una? Attendance. Si attendance? Si soul winning? Or something wrong? Knowledge. Si una man si knowledge? Si lakay. Halika lakay. Halika lakay. Nakaya ka, liya. Ano next na, ano next na? Ano pa yung next? Diligence. Halika rito, diligence. Para may lalabas ko ngayon. Halika, diligence. Halika, halika rito. Tayo pa lang dito. Halika. Ay, pili pa halika. Pili pa halika. Halika. Ang ginakaabong ng grace. Sumunod. Kumayo pa rito. O ito. We have attendance. We have soul meaning. We have Bible reading. What's next? Diligence. Diligence. Ano yan? Huh? Knowledge is Bible reading. Ano yung diligence? Prayer. 
Why po? Prayer meeting. Sukarong, sukarong. O ano sunod sa diligence? Love. Love. O, para kung malalaman ng isang tao may pag-ibig, nagkilipod. But by love, serve one another. Halika nito ang, ikaw si pag-ibig. Alala ko dati, yung biyaya na example ko si Kenneth. Ngayon, napalitan. Sige, ikaw. Ikaw si love. Pag may love ka, ano meron ka? Service. Naglilingkod ka. Ano pa yung isa? Grace. Ano ba ganda sa grace? Si Joseph. Isa si Joseph. Joseph, ano ka? Kulang po yung dalit mo. Gabal. Masa ulo. Pantay kayo ba? Pantay kayo. Pantay. Ngayon na. Ngayon. Okay. So, ito si Biyaya. Ang sabi ng verse 2, na tayo dapat ay mag-abound sa biyaya. At pag sinabi natin biyaya, it is, God is the God of all grace. Buo. Hindi po parcel ang natanggap mo. Okay? Meaning to say, pag ikaw ay patanggap ng biyaya ng Panginoon, hindi ka lang dapat sa attendance. Eh, masakit niyan. Attendance ko lang bagsa ka na eh. Okay, review muna. Sino to? Attendance. Si Faith. Ito naman si? Si Soul Winning. Kung maraming kristyano ay, hindi pa rin yung Soul Winning. Palatagal na. Mananang palataya. Sino to? Si Bible Reading. Ito, si Prayer Reading. Ikaw. Si Service. Ikaw naman si Grace. Si Giving. Pag ikaw ay mayroong biyala ng Panginoon, itong lahat na ito, mag-aabound ka. Ano yung dulo ng verse 7? Abound in this grace. Also, meaning to say, the source is the grace. Ito, resulta lang ito eh. Alam mo, mga kapatid, pag ikaw, biyaya ang Panginoon, biya, at work ang biyaya sa iyo, all of this will follow. Service will follow. Love, uh, service will follow. Prayer will follow. Uh, Bible reading will follow. Soul meaning will follow. And attendance will follow. Ang problema, maraming mananang palataya, attendance, bagsak na. Sino dito last week, opening ng SM Central? Sapa doon sa SM Central, pinabukas ng last church. Ha? Oh, abiertas. Pero sa akin na sa Central, pero linggo wala sa church. Alam mo kahit anong pinagkataan mo, walang dahil ng when grace is at work. Grace will make you about in church attendance. Naiintindihan ko mga kapatid? Yan ang biyaya. Ia-abound ka niya sa attendance. Eh, tagal mo ng kristyano hanggang ngayon, baka ka pa rin katuloy ko kung makapagsimba ka once a week. And you think it's enough? And you thought that you are growing? Isa pa lang yan. O ilang sa inyo dito ang babagsak sa attendance? Masakit yan, attendance na nga lang. Bihira ka na lang, once a week ka na lang, late ka pa. Natatandaan niyo po, God, someday will reward us. Alam niyo ba may reward to mga tao faithful in church attendance? What kind of reward is that? It's crown of righteousness doon sa mga faithful. Yes. Alam niyo ba yun? Punta kayo sa 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Kapabasa ko sa inyo mga kapatid. Kaya nga alam niyo yung encouragement sa amin na yung ating ginagawa, alam niyo hindi masasayang yan. Alam niyo, service-service lang yan. And you don't take your Christian life seriously. Ito yung sabi ng Bible in verse 8. 2 Timothy 4.8 Henceforth, there is made up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is Pag ikaw hindi ka absinero sa church attendance, sino mahal mo? Sino mahal mo? Ang pagbabalik ng Panginoon Kaya hindi ka papatay-patay hindi ka patulog-tulog masakit na, taga dito ka na late ka pa. Ang lapit na ng bahay mo, late ka pa. Kaya minsan, hindi mo makita ang biyaya sa tao kasi sa attendance pa lang, bagsak na. 
Ano man ang problema mo, when grace is at work, it will make you abound. In good works. Kasama pa yun sa attendance of good works. Kasama! So, meron kang attendance. So, how's your attendance? Okay, sige. Let's say, ikaw, attendance. Nalumala mo, atras ka. Yan. O, ito naman. Sino to? So, winning. Pag Christian ka, ang grace ang biyaya, ang, ang motivation mo, ang sabi na sa Ephesians chapter 5, For we know the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And the love of Christ constrained us. Ba't ka nagsosul winning? Dahil sa natanggap mong biyaya. Eh baka sa atin, dance bag sa kanay, baka mong susul winning. Ano mangyari? Ang tagal mo ng kristyano, hindi ka pa rin nakapagbibigay ng tracks. Ang tagal mo ng kristyano, ang gano'n yun. Faith promise, hindi ka pa nagsusuporta. Kailangan pang pilitin. Hello? And you say that you are saved by grace? Shame on you. Atras. You don't have so many. Ikaw, ang tagal mo ng kristyano, pati books of the Bible, hindi mo palang kung saan mo mong Hanggang ngayon, 10 years ka ng kristyano, hindi mo pa nababasa, ultimo isang book ng Bible. Baka Diyo, hindi mo pa nababasa. One chapter na lang. How's your Bible reading? Are you broken? Hello. If you're growing in grace, you will grow in Bible reading. Ay, hindi ka nagbabasa ng Bible. Three at last, bagsak. Ikaw. Hindi ka nagpiprayer. How's your prayer life? Ang prayer mo parati, Lord, bahala ka na sa lahat. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if Jesus prayed before He was arrested, Panginoon na yun, ha? Nanalangin pa ikaw. Mas malakas ko naman sa Panginoon. Eh, by the way, for us to be able to withstand the devil by all perseverance, with all prayer, Diba sa atin Ephesians 6? And supplication. Kaya huwag mo sabihin hindi mahalaga ang prayer. Kaya marami. Pansinin mo, pag Sunday, marami. Pag Sunday night, marami. Prayer meeting. Ano sa lang kumakate? Asa na yung biyaya? Asa na si prayer? Pagdating sa ibang pupuntahan, nakakapunta. Pagdating sa church, hindi makapunta. Ay, hindi kasi ako makapunta sa church kasi ganito, ganito. Pero pati sa ibang bagay, walang dahilan. O, bagsa si prayer. Ito naman, si Sir, isang tagal mo na kristyano, hanggang ngayon, pagpapainit ka pa ng bangko. Wala kang ginagawa, puro ka lang mawa. Are you serving? Kasi kailangan mo lumalago ka sa pag-ibig, kung lumalago ka sa paglilingkod. Ang taong nagmamahal ay naglilingkod. O, di ka lumalago sa pag-ibig. Eh, paano kalala mo sa biyaya? Ano yung biyaya? Di ba giving? Eh, paano kaya? Ito, may, may attendance ka nga. May attendance ka. Di ka na chosen winning. May Bible reading ka nga. Eh, wala ka naman ng service. Pero, meron pa ang prayer. O, sino na iwan? Wala kang sumining, wala kang service. Arap kayo dito. Pero pag may biyaya ka, ano gagawin sa'yo ng biyaya? Ia-abound ka na sa lahat dito. Na saan man magpunta ang biyaya, all of you will follow. Sumunod, sumunod. And that is what the Bible says, that grace will abound. Papalaguin ka niya sa attendance mo. Yung attendance mo, hindi ka as much as possible, kung talagang wala kang legitimate person, you will not absent yourself. Pagbibigay tayo ng next year ng, ng reward sa pinaka-faithful church attendance, ay yan ito, crown of righteousness. Wow. Ha? Certificate of righteousness. <laughs> Di ba? You will grow in attendance. You will grow in soul winning. You will grow in prayer. You will grow in in a pray, in prayer, in Bible reading, in service, and also in giving. <laughs> Just try to imagine, pa ako kayo pag lahat ng mga nang palataya ang grace na kaabaw. Alam niyo, wala tayong problema. 
Bakit tayo maraming problema? Kasi grace is not a work. Ito kasi yung touch dyan, mga kapatid. Let me repeat the quotation that I've quoted. It's one thing to know the grace of God in our head. It's one thing to allow it to touch, to let grace in our hearts. Maybe you have, you have knowledge of everything. Pero pag wala kang grace, hindi ka nag-a-abound, matatapos yan sa attendance eh. Pilay. Naintindihan yung mga kapatid. Pilay. Mga kapatid, let me encourage you, kailangan natin dito biyaya ng Diyos. Kasi ang biyaya, tuturo ang mga mag-abound sa lahat ng bagay. Hindi natin kaya ng mag-isa. Kaya ang Panginoon already provided the vision and the vision is the grace of God. Sige po. Ang tanong, meron ka naman yan? Ilan kayo? Two, four. Meron ka naman yan? Anin na yan? Kasi yung natanggap mo is all grace. At pag sa akin biyaya, it will abound. Oh, may bisbinesto sa yung biyaya ng Panginoon. Let me ask you, saan ka nag-aabang? Tanong nyo ulit yung sarili nyo, kayo nga ulit kayo dito, kayo nga ulit, kayo nga ulit, kayo nga ulit, kayo nga ulit. Gusto ko kayo i-reflect ng mga sarili nyo, ha? Amen. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Sige, so according to sa live kanina. Sige, straight na lang. Straight. Yan. Ask yourself this question, are you growing in your attendance? O baka mula noon hanggang ngayon, wala kang pagbabago. How's your attendance? Are you growing? Are you satisfied just to attend Sunday morning? Always late? <laughs> Alam niyo, nakakahiya tayo sa Panginoon, mga kapatid. Para ba lang ang ating iniisip? Hindi alam niyo ang Panginoon ang ating ginagawa. Isa pa, pag ikaw ay nasa attendance, you give your mind and heart in what you're doing. You don't roam around, you don't talk with with uh, with your seatmate, you focus your mind and heart to the preaching of God's Word. Yeah. At hindi ka para na sa sinihan, kain ka ng kain dyan, nag-iiwa pa ka ng kalat. Ah. Pag kumain naman kayo, by the way, pakiusap ko, ibulsa ninyo at huwag niyong iiwan dyan at huwag niyong iipit dyan sa mga sumbok. Kayo mga magulang, turuan niyo yung mga anak niyo, disiplinahin niyo. Ah. Ah. Ito po ay lugar kung saan tayo ay nagsasamba. O tapos ang service, ang daming kamer dyan. Learn to respect the sanctuary. Of course, this building is not the church. We are the church, but this is the place where we gather. And you ought to behave. Diba sabi ng Bible, thou oughtest how to behave thyself in the house of God. Kasama sa pagbibihig yan, yung manner. Ang bata, pag hindi yung riyak, huwag yung ilagay sa likod. Hindi naman umiyak, buhat kayo ng buhat. Hayaan nyo yung mga nanay magdisiplina. Kaya yung mga young people, huwag kayo karga ng karga, at mga araw pag nagkaanak kayo, mananawa din kayo. Are you growing in your attendance? Sagutin yung tanongin nyo yung sarili nyo. Question. Ang tagal mo na kristyano, nakapagsulwini ka na ba? Kaya pagbigay ka lang ng tracks. Hindi mo naman alam kung paano may kilos ang Panginoon. How's your witness? Are you growing? Basahin mo yung Acts. Papansinin mo doon, Great grace was upon them all. Anong ginagawa nila? They preach everywhere, preaching the name of Christ. Ang biyaya at tuturo ang kanyang ipahayag ang Panginoon. Hindi lang sa iyong bibig, pati sa Facebook mo. Sasabihin mo kung ano ang nasa puso mo. Are you growing in witness eh? Ikaw, Christian ka for many years. Are you growing in knowledge? How's your Bible reading? Ikaw pa, meron ka, lumala ko ka pa sa verses sa alam mo sa Bible. Come on, ask yourself. Perfective questions ito. O ang tagal mo ng Christian kung alam mo lang sa verse Jesus wept. Are you growing in your prayer life? Ang tagal mo ng kristyano hanggang ngayon, hindi ka pa rin umaate ng prayer meeting. 
Now, I understand sa may mga trabaho. Pero ikaw ang lapit-lapit na lang ng bahay mo. Hindi ka pa nagpe-prayer meeting. Ano yung mga kung gano'ng kalag ang prayer meeting? Pasahin mo ang Acts 1. Before the, before the Lord uh, multiplied in, and increased the numbers of the church, ano mo na unang ginawa niya? 120 they were in the upper room praying. Yeah. Amen. Hindi mo kaya gawin. Kung papano yung nila na tayo gawin ng Panginoon sa Panginoon. Eh. Are you growing in your prayer life? O ito, are you growing in ministry? Your gifts to others? Ang tagal-tagal mo ng Christian, nung gano'y hindi ka pa rin naglitingkod. Yung talay mo, hindi pa rin nagagamit sa iba. Hanggang ngayon, gusto mo ikaw pa rin ang pinaglilingkuran. Ikaw pa rin ang sinusundo. Ikaw pa rin ang binibisita. Ikaw pa rin ang sinusuyo. Pag ikaw ay mayroong pag-ibig, lumalago sa pag-ibig, lumalago ka sa paglilingkod. Hindi the more kang tumatagal, nawawala ka sa paglilingkod. How about this? Ito maraming galit dito eh. Sa giling. At ang mga galit sa giling, yung unsafe. Unsafe. Are you growing in your giving? Misal, tights pa lang, hirap na hirap na tayong ibigay. Pinukupitan pa natin ang Panginoon. Pag nag-tights pa tayo, hindi pa tights of all. Kasi ating tights of all, it's all. All the substance that you receive, you give tithes. Yep. Iba sabi ng Pharisee, I give tithes of all that I possess. Amen. O yung meron ka na natanggap mo. Blessing yun eh. O are you growing in grace? O pag ikaw ligtas ka, alam mo, pupunta ka ng langit, nagsusuporta ka dapat ng mission. Grace mo eh. Ang tithes ba giving? No. Ano ang tithes? It's simple learning. Eh. Nagbigay ka na ba? Maniwala ka sa pang-J ko, may pang-J ko ka, pang-faith, wala ka. Now again, don't get me wrong. Wala akong issue dyan of obtaining material possessions. I want new shoes, I want good dress, good clothes. But listen, kung meron kang pangbigay sa mga bago niya at wala ka man ng pangbigay sa faith, eh mahihahila ka naman. Puro ka forma, puro ka forma, pero wala akong pakailap sa mga Christian, mga unsaved na namamatay. Sabi na natin yung pera mo. Listen, lahat po tayo will be accountable to the Lord. Pag hindi ka lumalag po sa lahat niya, meaning to say, maaaring ang grace hindi talaga active sa'yo. Maaaring yung biyaya talaga, hindi ka naman talaga ata na matanggap ng biyaya, isa ka mag-aapaw. Eh yan yung nagsimula. Kung ito sinimulan ka, yan din ang magtatapos sa'yo. From here, just try to imagine this, you have attendance, faithful ka, you have soul winning, kung ano soul winner na Christian pa, pag bila ikaw, lumalago ka sa namin, sa Bible reading, ikaw naman ay lumalago ka sa prayer meeting. Just try to imagine this, if we have the same attendance in our meeting service, I believe our church will grow. Do you believe that? Yeah. Pero ikaw, absinero ka. Do you think our church will grow? Di ba sabi ng Bible, the unity of the faith? How can we grow if we are not united? Meron kang prayer. Meron kang paglilikod. Could you imagine this? Nagpo-compensate sila sa bawat isa. Naglilikod ka. Ito naman, lumahala ko kanil sa pag-ibig. Just try to imagine this. We have a dynamic church. Basahin mo Acts chapter 2, lahat sila meron. Punta tayo sa Acts chapter 2. Diyan lang tayo, mga pobi. Go to Acts chapter 2. Tignan nyo ah. Gusto nyo ba lumabo yung iglesia ng Panginoon? O hindi ito, hindi ito mangyayari ng isang tao lang. Hindi naman ako nagpapalago eh, hindi naman tao nagpapalago. It's God. Okay na yung mga puti ah. Verse 42, and they continued yung mga verse 41 sa mga naligtas, dinagdag, o mga sayo ito. Ilan ang naidagdag? 3,000. Itong naidagdag na tatong libo, verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Ano yan? Knowledge. O, meron siyang knowledge. Doctrine. O, alam mo bakit tumapis? 
Alam mo ba kung bakit bakit siya tinatag ng Panginoon? Dapat alam mo! Hello? Hindi na gaming. Yeah. Tama ba? O meron silang knowledge, what else? And fellowship, uy, may attendance sila. Correct? O what else? Meron silang breaking of bread. Meron silang uh, communion. At meron silang fellowship. Uy, meron silang asan si fellowship? Attendance fellowship. Meron silang prayer. And prayer, di ba sabi ng Bible? May prayer sila. At ang sabi ng Bible, verse 44, And all that believe were together and had all things common. Meron din silang place, verse 45, and sold their possession. Kita mo? Meron silang place. Lahat kompleto. And look at what the effect. Look at the effect. Verse 47, praising God. And having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be said. Eh, papaano nga hindi matatagdag araw-araw ay may soul winner? Lahat soul winner. Wow! Tingin mo, linggo-linggo tayo may babautismohan niya. Bakit? Eh, lahat ng mga 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 soul winner. Soul winner si Talia. Soul winner si Mona. Soul winner. Lahat ng bawat isa na mga alat ang susunod na di yung bayo. Eh, talagang daily talagang dagdag. Ano pong source? the grace of God. Hindi tayo mag-aabaw sa anim na yan. Sa giving, sa service, sa prayer, sa na Bible reading, so reading in attendance, if grace is not at work. Yep. Kung isang pakita mo, kung sino yung naglilingkod, kung sino yung sakwain, yun yung special number, yun din naman sa orkestra. Anong, anong ginagawa ng iba? Ang masakit na ng partisipasyon na lang ng iba, makikinig na lang, late pa. Nag-quick-quick-quick pa instead of listening to the special songs. How can the grace of God minister to you if you're late and if you're absent? These people are nag nagpractice practice na hanggang alas gis ng gabi para lang mag-minister sa inyo. Wow. Kaya na dapat umaga kayo nagpupunta, maaga. So that we can minister grace to everyone. Eh hey, wala, ganito na lang. Pakaib ba kayo, ganito na lang yung church natin. Ang ganda-ganda ng pano, baka may iba pang dahil ng iba. Kaya tinakapunta, wala na wala. Pero marami pa rin absent. You know, when grace is at work in your life, whatever the circumstances you may church, you will come to church. No matter what the circumstances you will abound so many, kung muna naman bumaghiman, hindi ka mapipigilan. Ay biyaya ka ng Diyos. And let the grace of God not only affect your mind, but let it, let the grace of God enter into our hearts. Because when grace enters into our hearts, you will abound in everything. You may be seated. Ito ngayon. But not about the jan. Ito naman. Since it was bestowed on every churches, binestowed sa atin ito, I believe there is a grace that bestowed on Scripture Baptist Church. Bawat isa po sa atin mayroong biyayang ibinigay ang Panginoon. And as you, as you will read and study the Word of God, ang biyaya po na nagsimula sa atin, hindi dapat yan siniset aside o ini-stop time. Dapat po yan ginagamit. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10. Kaya nga sabi ng Bible, mag-abound. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10. Look at what the Bible says. As every man hath received the gift, look at the word, even so, what? Come on, what's the word? Nakatanggap ka ng biyaya, anong dapat mo gamit sa biyaya? minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. By the way, since grace is a gift, alam mo ang biyaya, ang regalo na pwede maabuso. Correct? Yeah. Lahat po ng regalo ng bagay na ating natatamasa, pwede maabuso. 
kay pwede rin masayang. So since the grace of God that was given us was a gift, it can be wasted. Now, papaano ngayon kung masasayang yung biyaya? Again, ang biyaya po pwede masayang. Dahil ito ay regalo, pe pwede itong take for granted. Now, papaano? Alam mo, pagligtas ka and you don't, you don't even pay attention to the grace that the Lord is calling you. Sasayangin mo eh. Then yun sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In verse 9. Parang may alas natin mga kayo tayo mo. 1 Corinthians 15, 9. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace which was, again the word, bestowed upon me, or given upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more upon the good that they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So number one, take note of this. Grace can be taken for granted by not sharing the gospel. Ang biyaya po ay isasayang pag hindi ka nagsosol winning. Sapagkat ang sabi ni Apostle na Pablo, kung meron mang hindi dapat maligtas, ako yun. Pero sa biyaya ng Panginoon, ako'y naligtas at dahil lang kung bakit, ano po ngayon, dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon ay binigay sa akin. Kaya nga sabi sa verse 11, Therefore, whether it were I or, or they, so we preach, and so we be live. Kaya pag Kristiyano ka, ang grace ng Panginoon sa iyo, hindi ka nag-witness. You are taking the grace of God for granted. So grace can be taken, gra taken for granted by not sharing the gospel. Secondly, grace can be wasted by not serving. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1. Ano yung serving? Di ba? Love? Oh, chapter 6 verse 1. We then, as workers together with Him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. So grace can be wasted if you are not using it to serve others. Alam mo, may gift sa'yo ang Lord eh, kaso hindi ka naglilingkod eh. Anong sabi ng Bible? Sinasayang mo. Na ako naniniwala, hindi lang worker dapat ang naglilingkod. Kasi sabi ng Bible, lahat ng ligtas, workers together. Alam niyo, tawag mo dapat sa sarili mo, worker. And as a worker, ano ginagawa ng worker? From the word, the root word, what? Trabaho. See, kaya po itong biyaya para hindi natin masayang, maglingkod tayo. Tama po ba? Anong ginagawa mo? Meron pa pwedeng gawin eh. You serve. What else? Grace can be frustrated by not living in faith. Galatians chapter 2. Kita niyo lang ang sinabi ko kanina doon sa amin. Meron o Galatians 2. Verse 20. Sabi ni Apostle na Pablo, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, look at this, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. See? Grace can be frustrated by not living in faith. Kaya ngayon ating buhay, ano yung faith niya kanina? Ano yung faith? Ano yung faith? Attendance. Pag ikaw hindi ka nag-a-attend, sinasayang mo, pinufrustrate mo ang grace ng Lord. Na-frustrate na kayo? Sino sa'yo hindi pa na-frustrate? I believe all of us have so many frustrations in life. 
but did you know na pag yung grace niyo mo ginagamit, pa-absent-absent ka, anong ginagawa mo sa pala ng palata sa grace na binibigay sa iyo? Fino-frustrate mo. Kung baga pag nakikita ka ng Panginoon, sabi niyo, workmanship ko ito eh. Pero pag galito. Hello? Grace can be frustrated by not living in faith. Kaya hindi ka tapat sa church attendance mo, napupustrate mo ang grace ng Diyos. Maliwanag ba? Yeah. Yung pa yung Bible ba consistent sa Word of God? Yung, yung sinabi ko doon sa anin mo sa Sake Corinthians na dapat tayo nakaabaw, is it consistent with God's grace? Exactly. Ano yung faith? Attendance. Ano yung, ano yung pag di ka nag-lilikod, serving, that's now. You are wasting. Tinig-take mo for granted pag di ka nag-sosolving eh. O ito pang apat. We can fail in grace by being unforgiving. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Ito yung mga tao ang gamay, hindi ka pa rin nagpapatawad. Alam mo, pag di ka nagpapatawad, babagsak ka sa biyaya ng Diyos. Ito ha? Alam mo, ang bitterness, ang forgiving spirit, ikaw ang sisira sa sarili mo. Ang sabi ng Hebrews 12, 15, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby may be defiled. See? Any man fail of the grace of God. We can fail in the grace of God when we do not forgive. Offended ka, nasaktan ka, Paano ka magpapatawad? Gaya ng pagpapatawad sa iyo ng Diyos. Kasi makifail ka sa grace when you start to have bitterness in your heart. Alam mo, bitterness, powerful yan. Powerful to destroy you and destroy others that surrounds you. At isa pa, final and last, grace can be abused by living in sin. Romans 6.1 Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we then that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And he goes on to say in verse 6 Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. See that? Grace can be abused. Christian, paano matagal na? Hanggang ngayon, meron ka pa rin tinatawag ng kasalanan. You're abusing the grace of God. And that is not God's intention for us. Hindi ka inabaw ng Lord sa biyaya so that you may you may live in sin. Grouse, grace, God allowed the grace of Him to abound in your life so that you may abound into good works. Kaya po ilang biyaya na yun, mga kapatid. Ito yung biyaya na kailangan natin. So number one, the source of the vision is the grace of God. Hindi mo maiintin na yun mga pinagasabi ko. Sa biyaya ng Panginoon, pagkula sa lahat, hindi mo naiintindihan yung biyaya na natanggap mo. At hindi ka nakakabaw. Ha? Huh? Ano yun? Again, ang kristyano lang po nakakaintindi yan. Make sure that you are safe. Because the source of this vision is the grace of God. Now as we close, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Sino pa tong grace na ito? Tignan nito. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Are you there? Read that verse all together. Ready? Read. Yun. Sabi ng Bible, you know. You know. If you are saved, you know the grace. What kind of vision is this? That the Bible says, though Jesus was rich, yet, for your sakes, He became poor, 
so that we preach poverty might be rich. Kaya ang mayaman sa biyaya dahil merong naghirap at nagbalik niya. Kaya maintindihan mo na ang vision ng buhay mo is not to live for yourself. It's to live for Him. And may I remind this morning, mga kapatid, that faith promise giving is God's vision to all of us. For faith promise giving is God's vision to His church. You are spending money in so many things. But you're not willing to give to your faith promise offering. Vision of Joseph. Remember why the why why Apostle Paul asked relief or help from them because of the vision of grace. Sabi niya, yung mga Macedonian churches nagbigay kahit meron silang pinagdaan ng problema, nagbigay sila, nagkabawin sila, eh, what more kayo? Talawin ko rin kayo ngayong umaga, nag-aabawin ka sa napakaraming bagay. Ano? Nag-aabawin ka ba sa biyaya? Ano yung biyaya na yan? That is the grace to give. That is the grace to live. That is the grace to serve. A grace to to uh, witness. A grace to to be faithful in your church attendance, and so many things. The source of provision is the grace of God. Pag hindi ka motivated ng grace, kahit anong sabihin mo sa'yo, itundula ko sa'yo, biyaya ng Panginoon, you will never comprehend this. But if you are saved, you know the grace of Christ I'm talking about. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know. Ano sabi ng Bible? Let's abound in this grace. Let's not frustrate it. Let us not waste it. Let us not uh, set, uh, set it aside, but rather, let us abound more and more. Ay po may lang na malalaman. <coughs> Panginoon, salamat po sa oras na ito. Sa inyong nakilang salita, maparating ang papaalala sa amin na biyaya ay papasaganayin, papasaganayin, ganayin kami sa napakaraming bagay na inyong hindi sa amin. Lord, the message is very clear that the source of the vision of this church is your glory and honor. Have us Lord to have a God vision. The Apostle Paul appealed to the Christian church that your grace was also bestowed on them as you have bestowed it on the churches in Macedonia even so do ye Tinuhan mo kami Panginoon bilang isang mana ng palat I have a heavenly vision and that vision is the grace of God that your grace Jesus Christ should motivate us to abound in this grace Ako Panginoon ginawa niya lahat para sa amin ano ang pagpwede namin bagay na gawin para sa inyo what we can do, Lord, is the least. I pray that you will help us to grow in grace, not to frustrate the grace. Now, what's the name of the Bible? As Apostle Paul said, I labor more abundantly that I will not receive the grace of God in vain. As I give the invitation once again, bless your people as they come. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. The altar is now open. God spoke to you. You come. And ask the Lord for help to come out in this place of God. That this was God.
Thank you.